before we begin i request all attendees to keep their mics off unless you are speaking and keep your cameras on and with this i invite the house to listen to the arguments for the first topic the topic is humans living in forest areas pose a threat to conservation of flora and fauna and hence we must adopt a policy of evicting all forest dwellers our first speaker kirtana b nayar is from gems new millennium school dubai uh, kirtana is going to be talking for the topic kirtana i request you to turn on your mic and take the floor uh, am i audible and visible yes Okay, thank you. Anusha, may I request you to uh, make Kirtana on the spotlight? Uh, shall I begin? Yes, please. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, respected adjudicators, worthy opponents, and fellow audience. My name is Kirtana Babu Gopakumar Nair, and today I'll be speaking for the motion that humans living in forest areas pose a threat to the conservation of flora and fauna, and hence we must adopt a policy of evicting all forest dwellers. Firstly, I shall be defining the motion in which the forest dwellers can be defined as the people who travel to forest areas and play havoc with the resources and lives which the forest harbor. These group of people can consist of builders, nomads, and any and all people except the tribes who have their roots which originate by inhabiting such places. So, in all sense, forest dwellers can be defined as the people who come into forests to settle in such places by which they may directly or indirectly cause harm to the flora and fauna which surround them. The model I would like to propose is one in which a policy can be made under the Forest Right Protection Act. and this policy must function without disrupting the already existing protection program for the tribal families this policy would consist of a condition to provide living accommodations to all forest dwellers evicted who have been staying in forest for more than a time period of 5 years now coming on to the reasons as to why the forest dwellers must be evicted firstly with settlement in such places comes the need to acquire resources for your convenience these resources could consist of anything which helps you to adapt and flourish in the new environment now these resources could consist of logs for bonfires wooden cabins and so on this could lead to logging then you may need cattle for milk meat and that will lead to cattle ranching and after that as the saying goes he who is not contented with what he has would not be contented with what he would like to have then the forest dwellers will think let's build a dam we'll get water for consumption and irrigation then they'll chop down not one not two but several trees to make this possible and these are just to name a few secondly there have been many cases when the builders just barge into forest and decide overnight to build apartments with a good view for the customers of at the forest borders for this they cut down multiple trees and as a result destroy the houses of many little animals which live in them Also, if I recall correctly, between grades four to grade eight, we were taught about forest conservation and about the downfalls of deforestation and how the humans in recent years have not been paying any heed to this issue and have continued to proceed as per their will. Thus, the opposition parties don't practice what they preach. Hence, I sincerely and genuinely hope that the House sides with the proposition party, which states that a policy must be passed on to evict the forest dwellers before they can cause any more harm to the nature. Thank you. Thank you, Kirtana. That was great. Uh, with that, I now invite you to hear some arguments against the topic. and presenting those views are Mad madhiha khan from the heritage school kolkata thank you ma'am am i audible yes yeah okay good afternoon everyone present over here so first of all i would like to first define forest dwellers who are any member or community who have lived for at least 3 generations and have primarily resided in or depended on forests or forest lands for bona fide livelihood needs and so they don't also need to they do they do also consist of tribes As I'm an Indian myself, I've majorly encompassed my arguments around the plights of the Indian tribal communities. About eight million indigenous people in India are in danger of being evicted by the government. 
from their forests. And these communities are traditionally dependent on forest resources for the subsistence as uh, identified by the government of India itself. Ironically, they are now being persecuted by the same government entrusted to protect their rights and entitlements. According to the 2011 census, these tribal people amount to about 104 million, about 9% of the country's then 1.2 billion population, which makes it the largest indigenous population in any country in the world. And they occupy about 22% of India's geographical terrain. So how are we to evict each and every one of them just to conserve our forests, flora and fauna without taking into consideration the huge amount of social, economical and psychological distress they all will face through? Because to me, and I'm sure to each one of us, if someone suddenly comes into our homes and tries to demands us to get outside of that home, we have shared the bond for so long without any justification. I can imagine the inhuman justice, the injustice they all go through. It should not even be doubted that forest dwellers have affected our forest. They never did all these centuries ago. So, so why won't they do it now? The main culprits are not these vulnerable communities who themselves are, themselves are affected by forest degradation, but in fact, huge private industries involved in mining, produ timber production, and so on. In fact, when tribal communities were allowed the rights to their forests, a huge amount of conservation was seen in the community. For example, the Soliga tribe of Karnataka, whose rights were first identified under the Forest Rights Act, the Bilgiri Ramagoswami Temple, the data revealed over there, the tiger numbers rapidly increased after they came into the tribal reserves from 35 to 68, which is far higher than the national rate of tiger population growing in any other place. In the end, we have to realize that nothing is really gained by targeting vulnerable forest dwellers who have lived peacefully for so many ages with the forests. Rather than alienating them, conservationists should work with them towards their mutual goal of land fauna. Thank you. Thank you, Madhya. We will now move on to the next contestant uh, who is going to be talking for the moment, uh, for the motion. And the name is Siddharth Vishwanathan from TS Senior Secondary School, Mailapur, Chennai. Yeah, am I audible? Yes. Okay, uh, can I start? Yes, please. Good evening, everyone. I would like to start my speech by defining the word forest dweller. According to Cambridge Dictionary, a dweller is a person living in a particular type of place and a forest dweller is one residing in the forest. Based on who are considered as forest dwellers differs the answer of whether they pose a grave threat towards the conservation of flora fauna or not. If concept of forest dwellers is only those people who have been living in the forest for so long, just like indigenous people, then the threat levels are moderate. If concept of forest dwellers is a fusion of indigenous people or tribal people and newcomers from the lowlands who are now also living there permanently or using the land over there for natural resources, then the threat posed by them is grave. Certain practices forest by forest dwellers that have already re always resided there is such is like uncontrolled tilling of wetlands, slash and burn agriculture, clearing of trees for agriculture and housing, killing of trees and plants for traditional mes medicines, trampling of plant species that are endangered or critically endangered, such as herbaceous plants, leads towards the destruction of flora present. Forest dwellers are said to often indulge in activities such as fishing, poaching, and hunting of animals for skin and meat and etc. And uncontrollable, uncontrollable uh, hunting or uh, hunting of rare in, or endangered, critically endangered or even threatened species can have a huge effect on the existence of certain species on the surface of the earth. Most of the above mentioned activities are committed by these forest dwellers because of that lack of knowledge and awareness. Apart from the above mentioned threats, forest dwellers can be the cause for forest fires which will or might lead to a huge reduction in flora and fauna present in the earth. And aside from aside these, the forest too could put the lives of the forest dwellers in nature. Uh, forest uh, fires due to lightning strikes other than natural disasters, such as hurricanes, storms, and etc., not only affects the forest, but also its residers. Therefore, we can say that it is for the forest dwellers' own welfare, as well as for the conservation of flora and fauna present in forest, 
that the forest dwellers be moved out and it is about time that they are moved out from their isolated state and enlightened would get imparted with the knowledge of the current world therefore it is and it also gives possibility like great potential for possibilities such as mutual mutual transfer of intelligence or knowledge and of course it can be said that they'll face diff countless difficulties upon entering the outside world and it is bound to happen sometime and it's sooner the better the extent of difficulties can be reduced by compensation such as free education or uh, providing residence at state, state subsidized prices land for agriculture and the basic necessities i would like to conclude my speech by saying that there's a threat post to conservation of flora and fauna by forest dwellers and it's a considerable one hence we must adopt a policy of evicting all of the forest dwellers thank you thank you sadar uh, we now move on to our next speaker who is going to talk against the topic that is shudiksha basu from shri shiksha yatan school kolkata right i hope i'm audible and visible yes okay right so today we're talking about forests when we think forests we think trees timber resources the jungle book wildlife greenery the whole package but when we think forests do we think home think about it this way you have a place that you call home a place where you and your children have been living for years and your ancestors have been living for centuries your entire livelihood depends on this place and you haven't been taught to survive outside of it you worship this place and you know that you would do everything and anything in your power to protect it but suddenly some outsider has the audacity to tell you that your home is under threat and you're the one that's causing it when you have been the one defending and nurturing it in the first place how would you feel uprooted deracinated from your own home for a reason you don't even understand how would you feel this is a question we need to ask ourselves when we talk about the lives of forest dwellers because it takes real vanity to be sitting in the comfort of our own secure homes and be talking about evicting someone else from theirs a very good evening to one and all present here i am sudiksha basu from sri shikshatan school and i vehemently stand against the motion of the house today now we've talked emotion but let's assume you don't care about that you're a practical person and you care about saving the forests in india 100 million people reside in forests and with india's forest cover we get around 7000 square meters for every individual forest dweller so when side proposition tries to imply that forest dwellers overtax forest resources it's like saying that an eight eight bedroom bungalow is too small for one person to live in but then i'm not saying that it's not possible right people can get greedy but in that case instead of opting for the extreme and completely evicting forest dwellers why not impose minor regulations an easier cheaper and more morally conforming way out not just that when we talk about evicting forest dwellers are we thinking about where they are going to go to the cities to the slums the ones that are already overcrowded paucity in accommodation and in jobs 100 million people now dear audience i would like you to use your very competent sense of logic and just weigh in the pros and cons here evicting forest dwellers comes with a whole list of problems that i've already mentioned here whereas letting the forest dwellers be where they are actually contributes in conserving the forests which is our ultimate goal seems like a simple decision right but the question still remains dear audience which side of the scale will you place your bet on give that a thought thank you thanks to richa we'll we'll now have time for rebuttal all participants uh, have the liberty to rebut their opponent's view should there be any participant who wishes to uh, question or argue please uh, go ahead and let us know Uh, Miss Neha, could I please ask you on the procedures of the rebuttals? Are we supposed to just uh, go in order, or is it just a random order? It's a random order. There is no particular order that we've defined. Uh, you're just supposed to write on the group, and then I'll call upon the people in the order uh, of their writing to us. 
Is that okay, Kirtan? Any other follow-up question? No, thank you. All right. Oh, I have a follow-up question. Yes, Siddharth. Yeah. I is believe you want to have a button. Sorry. Yeah. Is there any particular format in which you're supposed to ask it? So the format is very simple. You have to go with a direct question and an argument. There, it cannot be a rhetoric statement. It cannot be a comment. It cannot be an observation. And there can be only one rebuttal that each participant is allowed to make to one particular opponent. That's it. Okay. Um, do you have a rebuttaling point, Siddharth? Um, we yeah, can I ask? We do have a rebutting uh, point, but then could we have some time to frame it? Like approximately one minute? Yeah, one minute, please. All right. For this particular round, we'll allow a minute. All participants must, must note that from the next following rounds, you have to make your observations while the speaker is speaking so that we can proceed immediately. Please go ahead. We'll give you a minute's time. Kirtana Siddharth. Okay. Um, so I would like to pose a rebuttal. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so I think the first speaker of Team Opposition mentioned that the forest dwellers include the tribal people as well, the tribal families as well. And I had mentioned clearly in my um, model that it consists of the people who come in to build houses. So could the uh, speaker of the, the first speaker of Opposition Team please uh, give us a point of view from their side about the people who come in to build houses and destroy the forest for that same purpose. Madhya, this is for you. So, yeah, like I mentioned, forest dwellers consist of all people who have lived from before only, like about three generations before or so. So if you just walk in uh, and you build a home, you are not really a forest dwellers. Forest dwellers are communities who have lived for quite a long time, for like decades and centuries or so, and they have formed a bond with the forest. And so if we really evict them from their own homes, then we have to take into consideration the um, the kind of policies the government is also taking like the government has not really you know um uh, they have not really supported these tribes they have just left them on their own and these tribes are like wallowing in their poverty and other diseases so you can't really evict everyone from there like all forest dwellers that's what the question says that's what i want to argue thank you all right Thank you, Madhya. Thank you, Kirtana. Siddharth, do you have any rebuttal in mind? Yeah, uh, this, this is to the second opposition speaker. Uh, could you explain as to why the situation of the forest, the situation that's faced by the forest dweller uh, by the policy of eviction is different? Is How is it different from the global warming and other uh, climatic changes caused by the people? non-forest dwellers? Um, thank you for your question. Uh, with I, As far as I could understand, with this you're implying that the forest dwellers are causing most of the global warming, right? But I'm afraid that is not true. Most of the global warming is uh, forest, forest dwellers being blamed for all the global warming being caused is completely unfair because uh, it's the, it's, it's the, bigger companies that cause most of it, most of it because of uh, uh, the top contributors of global warming and deforestation are mining and um, uh, also firewood, mass firewood collection and uh, charcoal production, which I think uh, forest dwellers have a very minuscule role to play in. So I think, uh, I think forest dwellers should not be blamed for all the global warming caused in the entire world. So thank you. Okay, thank you so much. With that, we conclude the first topic. Mm -hmm.